Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle to Newton Salas and I'm here with Nancy Grace. And today guys, we have a very interesting video to react to and this one says that the stages of creation of the universe according to the Quran and of course we have a lot of scholars who are going to give their opinion or say it based on the Quranic um, belief on how the universe here created i believe that this is going to be a very interesting um video for all of us today to learn a new thing you know from this um scholar so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this. So guys, let's get down to the video and check this out. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of The Quran and Science. This is your host, Tamir Mumtaz. Lucky to have Professor Zaghloul al-Najjar, Head of Committee on Scientific Facts in the Glorious Qur'an, Supreme Council on Islamic Affairs, Brother Mustafa and Brother Fuad. Today, we're going to speak about the stages of creation of the universe. Dr. Zaghloul, we spoke about the expansion of the universe, the Big Bang, the Big Crunch, and today we're going to speak about the stages of creation. Does the expansion and the Big... Do they come in the stages of creation? I begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator, the creator of this universe and of everything that's in it the one and the only one supreme power in that universe seeking his blessings and mercy on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the seal of that long chain of prophets and messengers sent by God for the guidance of man sent by Allah for the guidance of man and I greet you all in our Islamic way and your viewers. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right. May Allah's no. peace, blessings, and mercy be with you all. As we mentioned earlier uh, several times, the Holy Quran is the only form of divine guidance within the hands of man today that has been kept intact in exactly the same language of revelation, the Arabic language, preserved by the will of Allah word to word and letter to letter. Being with this quality, uh, every single notion in it has to be absolutely correct. Every word, every letter, every verse, every surah, every chapter has to be absolutely correct. We also mentioned that the Holy Quran is basically a book of guidance to man in areas that cannot be correctly addressed by man, such as the area of faith, the area of acts of worshipping, the area of the moral code, and the area of the code of transactions with others and these four basic areas are beyond the capacity of man to tailor any correct answer for himself so these are the basic foundations of the holy quran and of every revelation uh, from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the guidance of man yet we find that the holy quran is containing an immense quantity of cosmic verses verses that refer to the creation of the universe to the successive uh, stages in the embryolog embryologic development of man, um, notions of uh, many phenomena, wind, uh, clouds, uh, running water, many plants and their products, many animals and their products. And one would wonder why these verses are contained in the Holy Quran. And as we mentioned before, these verses come in the context of testifying to the might, knowledge and will of the Creator to testify for the uh, capacity of the Creator to annihilate His creation and resurrect it, uh, to uh, witness for the unity of the Creator, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything from the elementary particles to man in pairs, so that He and only He can remain in His initial unity above all His uh, creation. Uh, we also said that these verses are... Uh, an address to the people of our time who, who have been highly fascinated by science and technology and that's why we tell them if you don't believe the Holy Quran look at these scientific verses that cannot be refuted 
and cannot be produced by any other than Allah 14 centuries ago in a community that was completely illiterate. One of these verses is this verse uh, in Surah Al-A'raf, which reads, Inna Rabbakum Allah, verily your guardian Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام who has created both heavens and earth in six days uh, and here I'll stop uh, before completing the verse because these six days are not days like ours because our days were only uh, formulated after the earth was created and started to revolve around its own axis in front of the sun so these are successive stages six successive stages and I uh, can analyze these stages into the following the initial singularity or Yawm al when everything was contained in an initial body uh, then the Big Bang the explosion of this and the change of the, that initial singularity into a, a cloud of smoke and I call it Yawm al mm. and then the, the Yawm al when Allah has ordered both the earth and the firmaments to come out of that smoke uh, willingly or unwillingly and they said we will come in willing obedience يوم الدخان يوم الاتيان and after that we have يوم إرساء الجبال when Allah started creating mountains on the surface of that planet so that it can be a stabilizing medium for the whole planet as well as for the continental masses that were created on it uh, and then uh, two days for the creation of uh, plants, animals and, and humans so these are the six stages um, 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 six stages of creation of the universe and particularly of our earth this is agreed upon? Uh, uh, no, not agreed upon, this is my own analysis okay. and I assume that of course uh, either you can modify or add to it or play but this it. is your but, understanding of but I got thing. that from the Quran yes okay. I got that from the Quran yes. uh, we have the initial singularity stage Yawm al mm -hmm. then the Big Bang Yawm al mm -hmm. uh, 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 because al fatq is the opposite of al ratq you see yeah. and then Yawm al the uh, day of, of smoke from which Allah has created everything Yawm al when Allah has ordered the earth and the firmaments to come into being they came into being and Yawm uh, al uh, they when uh, mountains were created on our planet and probably something happened similar in other uh, uh, heavenly bodies and Yawm al al the day of creation so uh, we come, human beings come in the final stage oh at the very, at the very end yeah. the uh, oldest record uh, of life on earth goes back to 3.8 billion years wow. and the oldest record of man on earth does not exceed 100,000 years okay. So we came at the, at the very end. Okay. So uh, when Allah says, "Inna Rabbakum Allah, Aladhi Khalqa Samawati Wal Arda Fi Sittati Ayyam," your uh, guardian Lord is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who has created uh, uh, the firmaments and the earth in six days, means in six successive stages. Okay. ثم استوى على العرش. Then he settled himself on the throne. The throne is un unknown to us. You see. Uh, the settlement is a settlement that suits the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because as we said earlier Allah who has created this uh, vast immense orderly universe that's a very interesting video listening to this talking about the creation of the universe and then the professor was also in his own view you understand on the creation of course the secret is creation and how it is in the Islam and then also the scientific um, method and that's why he went on to talk about uh, it by saying that uh, even though science believe in Big Bang that uh, there was an explosion and it is this explosion that everything in a sense was created and then formed but then if you look at it religious wise of course just like he concluded if you look at it from research, you realize that this earth has been in existence for many billions of years ago. But life on this earth, uh, that's creation, that's humans, have not, based on um, research and the findings shows that uh, 
100 years ago, there was nothing like humans, you understand, uh, on this very earth, which shows that everything didn't just come into existence on its own, or like the way some people believe that we humans come through evolution, one thing turned to another, to this day, yeah. And then that have kind of always kept me wondering how an ant is it going to change to become a rabbit and a rabbit to war to monkeys and then straight to humans. If you look at it and all those things, you realize that they are not just possible. It was just God who created us. No matter how we try to integrate or interpret in and science to prove that yes, things comes into existence through Big Bang. It does not just make sense, you understand? Logically or whatever wisdom you think you understand you want to use, it just shows that it's not just true. Everything didn't just come into existence on its own. God just created us and then he has created us and he has given us purpose. And all that is expected of us is for us to live according to his will so that at the end of us, you understand, being here on this very earth, we can return back to our home, just like how our Lord Jesus Christ says in the book of John chapter 14, he says that he's going back to go and prepare a place, you understand, for us. And if all these things are not true, he could have not said it. And then we believe that Jesus Christ, of course, will not lie to us. It means that whatever he said, you understand, is true. Because everything he do here on this very earth was not just in a sense for his own benefit, but for our own benefit. Even his death on the cross, in a sense, was still on our own benefit in the sense that he does that word to be able to redeem us just for the atonement of our sin. So if you look at in a sense, all those things, it was nothing to do of his own self, of his own benefit, right? Yeah. So when you look at all those things, you realize that everything didn't just come on its own way, but it was only God who created everything on this very earth with a purpose. And that's why it's been expected that as you live here, make sure that you do not get out of that very purpose. Let that purpose should always be in your mind so that at the end you should not be found one thing or the other on the judgment day at least a very interesting video by the scholar and i believe that some of you must have learned from some of the things in the stand he was pointed out in the stand in the video so let's hear from you nancy wow very very interesting guys i so much love this video for the fact is to talk about and believe that god created heaven and earth so i believe that this video that those people that don't believe in god's creation that when they come across this video that they will believe that god is the one that have created us god is the one that created everything and he created us for a purpose he created us that we may serve him i have learned something and i pray that god will help us that we who live according to God's purpose and the purpose God has created us will not be in vain. So guys, this is the end of our video. If you like our reaction, you should like, share and subscribe. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, you remain blessed and I see you in my next video. Bye bye.